My name is Jane Agnelli. I'm Second A First Nations. That is, um, my people come from McLeod Lake Indian Band, which is about 90 miles north of Prince George. Um, my mother was Lena Agnelli. My father was Walter Salonis. Um, my grandmother, or my paternal, my maternal grandparents were Harriet Agnelli and uh, Albert Prince. And my paternal grandparents were uh, Monique and Theodore Tudyk. And um, I, I grew up in McLeod Lake. Um, I lived there the first few years of my life and lived with my grandmother and my, my uh, mother. And um, my father ne lived next door to them, and my paternal grandparents lived next door to him. So, and I was the first grandchild, so I was um, really, uh, I was really loved during those years by by all of my my grandparents. I have two sons. My my oldest son is Derek Orr. And uh, right now he's uh, chief of McLeod Lake Indian Band. My young, my youngest son is Darren Orr, and he is um, one of the managers for JISC. Uh, I've I grew up in Prince George. Uh, my mother remarried, um, and uh, we moved to Prince George. I have um, six six siblings, three brothers, uh, two brothers and four sisters, and uh, all of my family is in Prince George. My mother went to La Jack um, Residential School, and all of her siblings, and she had 10 other siblings. And my father also went to um, La Jack Residential School I can't recall all his siblings. I think he has eight or nine, and all of them went to La Jack Residential School. And how about yourself? Um, I I lived. I grew up in Prince George. Um, I went to school here. Um, I graduated uh, from Prince George Senior Secondary and um, got married not too long after I went to school. Uh, I had always been um, interested in writing, and when I went to um, um, seniors, uh, when I went to PGSS, I, uh, I remember doing some writing and really enjoying it. Uh, but after um, being married for a number of years, um, I um, became, I started working for the Friendship Center in 1978 and as a secretary bookkeeper. And at that time there was only three employees. And uh, what, there was the executive director, which was Jerry Donovan, and the uh, program manager, or I can't remember what the title was, with Charlotte Uberman and I was a third person on the staff. And uh, I worked for mostly in First Nations. Um, I, after being secretary, I went into um, accounting for, for probably about 10, 10 years, 12 years, and became interested in counseling because I had gone through my, my own um, addiction um, I, I had drank for a number of years, or I drank and it developed into um, an addiction where I was really hurting myself and the people around me, uh, including my son. So I decided to go into recovery, and I've been in recovery ever since. Um, I'm, I live with my partner, Gail, right now in Prince George, Gail Vosler. Uh, we've been together for about 18 years. And um, so one of the things I was wondering also, like you said, you've turned all that experience into the work you do today. Um, I'm a counselor now. I've been counseling since 
uh, since I, uh, when, when I, um, I believe it was in the early, late 80s, early 90s, I took training through Nietzsche Institute, uh, drug and alcohol training through Nietzsche Institute, uh, which uh, came out of pound makers in Alberta, uh, one of the older, oldest uh, First Nations residential treatment centers in the West. So out of pound makers came Nietzsche Institute where they, they uh, trained their own counselors and so I took that training and have been working in the health field for uh, since the early early, 19, uh, early 90s. Mm -hmm. And right now I work for Central Interior Native Health in Prince George. I've been there for about five years and um, I do, uh, we work with the um, people who are close to the street and a lot of the, our clientele are are, are residential school survivors, or the descendants of residential school okay. survivors. So just for clarification, did you go to LeJac? Yes. I thought you did. Yeah. I went to LeJac in um, the, probably the, around 1960. I went there for about uh, three years. Yeah. So... I think we'll get back to uh, talking a bit more about residential school in a bit, but just in terms of violence, would you say um, is violence in our community a concern for you, and how do you think it's impacted our community if it is a concern? I think uh, violence has really permeated every level of um, our community, from people who are on the streets to uh, people who you know, who are in jobs and I think by virtue of being Native, we are First Nations people and uh, Aboriginal people, is that um, everybody has been affected by the, uh, by residential school, uh, by going there, um, being separated from the families uh, I know that when I, when I was separated from my family, it was a really big deal. Um, it was the, one of the first things I remember is being taught English so that uh, I could go to Lejac. And I, my first language is second A, and um, I didn't speak English until I was four years old. And I was taught to speak English so that I could attend Jack. And um, one of the the memories that I have of um, Lejac when, when I first went um, is very few, and I remember only um, negative instances. One, one is when uh, we were, it was Halloween, I think, and we were being chased. And when we were caught, there we, they had um, put uh, some sort of dry soap in her mouth, and so that's what I remember from from there. And also uh, uh, being strapped, um, uh, having to kneel on the floor for a long time, and uh, it was so. It was always a something that was really negative. I don't remember being in a classroom, and I don't remember, um, like, books or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, would you say there's a connection between violence in our community and the residential schools? What, what is that connection? What is caused that? Uh, I believe that um, the violence comes from, first of all, separating, separating, um, taking children away from families. And it was really quite a traumatic experience. Uh, it was traumatic for the, the children being taken away and from, for the parents. And uh, I've talked to different, in my job as counselor over the years, 
uh, I've talked to different elders who said that the communities were just so quiet after the children left and that people were in so much grief that they didn't know what to do. And, and uh, so a lot of times what happened is they began to drink to deal with their sorrow. And, and so uh, when the children did come home, uh, their parents were um, drinking and uh, so it, it was like they came home from a situation that was really foreign to them and then coming back to some to expecting to be seeing people in the same state that that they had left but everything had changed and so there was a real breakdown in in the relationships between um, the the children and the uh, and the people in the community and so and two, a lot of times people didn't go home, like say they go to Lajac and they would be there for years and not go home for years. So they lost all connection with their family. And in Lajac, like some of the memories that I have is of being sick. When, when a child is sick, uh, You, 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 when you're with your family, when you're sick, you're taken care of, you're hugged, you're given, um, you know, that uh, you're given um, care, you know, gentle care. But when you're, when you're in a place like Le Jack, when you're sick, you're just in bed by yourself. And, and I remember being sick and, uh, just laying there, just wishing my mom was there, and uh, and I know that um, other other girls in the dormitory, when they were there uh, in the dormitory, the, a lot of times there would be a lot of crying at nights, just from uh, people who are girls who really miss their family, and one of the girls that was in my community. Um, her family would sell, send her parcels, and she was on, we were about seven. And what she did was she kept every little paper that, that came in the parcel. Like if she had candy, she kept all the wrappers, and all the package that it came, she would just treat it like it was um, her treasure. And I think that it truly helped her to, to get through uh, to get through the experience of being there. And the, the whole separation fr with families um, in living with, at Le Jack for, uh, for the years that people did, it's like we didn't learn how to be with our families. We didn't know what that was all about. Uh, and And People didn't really learn anything, I, I don't think, my perspective, is that it's hard, I, I think that it would be hard for a child to learn anything when, if they were uh, in school, um, in a place like Le Jack, because they were really shut down from the trauma of being there. And uh, not only that, that in Le Jack, they had a farm at Le Jack, and people, the kids at the school worked at, worked at uh, um, you know, working on the farm. And the girls worked um, sewing and, uh, and doing other things. Mm -hmm.